been talking about the cellular growth, the brain neurons, how they grow, how they de develop, how they proliferate, and how they start from just three germinal cell layers. And then how these three germinal cell layers differentiate. And the signals that come for differentiation are coming from the neighborhood, the neighboring cell layer. So each cell as it grows, each cell neuron group that grows, grows in relation to its neighbors. So essentially though we have learned the brain development is pre-programmed, it still has to have stimulation from the environment. And if you recall, we talked about the cell proliferation stage, where in the fetus and in the embryo and before that in the zygote, there is an enormous spurt of growth of neurons. The cells proliferate at a rate of 20,000 neurons per minute. And then, if you remember, we talked about the neural plate, the ectodermal tissue, the neural plate, the neural groove and the neural tube and within the neural tube which is vacant, the canal, comes a huge number of cells. Now when these cells are being manufactured, dividing, multiplying at an enormous rate, where do they go? Ah, then the concept of cell migration comes. So cells migrate to the outside and when cells migrate to the outside which means from inside the canal outwards, where do they go? How do they know where do they go and how do they travel? And if you remember, we talked about the radial glial cells which give them the elastic pathway for cells to capture to attach to and then move up to their destination. Now these radial glial cells are extremely important and let me recap for you. If you remember we saw this picture the last time and let us see it again, extremely important. This is the, vent the tube, the neural tube and inside is the ventricular space and inside this ventricular space you see these radials the radial glial cells which have extended and from the top to the bottom and here you see the magnification of one small neuron which has and there are millions around here which are doing the same thing. But look at this neuron and this neuron, the cell body you can see here, the processes of the neuron are attached to the glial cell clinging for life, actually for life because if they do not travel, they will die. So this neuron goes up the transport system and travels up to the transport system and when it reaches its destination, it gets off. Again, it is pre-programmed how it gets on to the transport system and how and where it gets off. It could have gotten off anywhere here, right? कि यहाँ से किसी भी जगह पे वो चढ़ सकता है और यहाँ पे किसी भी जगह पे उतर सकता था यही क्यों? That is pre-programming and we are going to talk about the hypotheses, various hypotheses which people have put forward why neurons travel to one location or aggregate. Now this word aggregate to a location. So the cells move on. And if you remember this picture again, this was the internal layer and as you see, I remember told you that the external layers are vacant, there is nothing there. So the internal layers fill up which is these layers closer to the internal tube and then the cells move up and gradually and gradually the cell layers fill up. So there are then six layers which of the cortex which this growth has to fill and this migration has to fill. So you can see the internal layer 
and then you can see the cells moving up and you see the external layer is completely vacant, does not have any cell bodies till the last stage where the cell bodies start emerging. And you remember I also told you about the growth cone. The axon has the growth cone and these growth cones have the nerve, nerve growth factors and they reach out and locate their neighbors, reach out and locate sources where they can synapse other neurons and once they have synaptic connections, they are relieved because they will survive because this also carries the food, the substance, the tropic factors which will ensure the survival of this neuron. So now we move on and let us talk about the regulation. How do cells regulate the number of cells? How is it regulated? How do we know you and I have 10 to 12 million cells, neurons and 10 to 12 billion glial cells? So for every neuron there are about 10 to 12 glial cells. If you recall, I told you that the younger brain, the growing brain, the neonate brain, even the fetal brain has many, many, many millions more than you and I have. Okay, so if these cells have grown to that extent, then how are cells regulated? So remember, if cells keep growing and connections expanding, how does this process stop? How does this development stop or how does this differentiation stop or how does this migration stop? Well, the easy answer is it regulates itself. <laughs> yeah, it does too and that means that it is pre-programmed. Now this self-regulation, of course it is pre-programmed and nuclei develop even if they are isolated. Nuclei means bunches of neurons which aggregate together, which collect together and once they collect together and they group together, then they form a group of neurons which have a similar function and which is those neurons which we call the nuclei. So nuclei develop even if they are isolated from the organ that they are supposed to control the organ of connection and denervation experiment, denervate, denervate means removing the nerve connection with the organ. Experiments have shown even if they are denervated, they still, the nuclei still form into bunches. Now this is very interesting. Well, another piece of evidence that we have is that muscles, if you recall, we talked about the embryo which starts moving and the embryo starts moving around 4 to 5 months of uh, prenatal development. Now, there is movement and which is the doctor says, oh, the baby is moving. Good. This is good news. When the embryo moves, does it have any external stimulation for the muscles to work or the muscles to move? No, the muscles move without any sensory input or sensory stimulation. So, these two pieces of evidence provide us with a clear indication that the regulation of cells, their growth, their connections is essentially a self-regulated process. Cells proliferate more than 40 times that of the normal adult. But what happens? Why do they come to the point that you and I have those small numbers? Basically, there are several things that are happening. Cells compete with each other, just like you and I compete, just like Darwin said that uh, in nature there is competition between animals, between species, and here we are talking about competition between neurons, the growing neurons, the neurons which do not yet have a life, but they still have a life. 
you know they have a fully formed functional life only when they form connections but remember that neuron that is struggling that is moving up so why is it doing so it is competing with other cells for limited resources that are within that growing brain a because it is they trying to preserve trying to maintain life preserving factors from the targets that it is going to get to so remember the target where it is going to get off the neuron that is where food is that is where the life preserving factors the tropic factors are so unless it reaches that site it will not be able to survive so this is this movement is a struggle to get to food get to nutrition get to life saving substances so it gets that and because it is limited this capacity of this um, life saving substances it can only be shared by a few so the few are those who get there first and the few are those who get there faster and the few are those who are stronger when they arrive so they sprout and the second thing is first of all there is limited uh, resources and worse story is there are limited targets to which these nuclei these neurons can move so limited targets limited resources many 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 neurons for the same so there is essentially competition and in competition some win some lose we all know that so when cells lose they lose not just the connections they lose not just the opportunity to be there but they lose life so cell death occurs some cells will necessarily die and there are processes in which they die the active process of dying and the passive process of death but either way cells do die and the strongest and the fittest survive and how do they survive if the connections are not formed cell will die off if neurons fail to send off projections to appropriate targets they will die off if there is competition for post synaptic now this is post synaptic space outside the synapse outside the neuron and there are cells which are competing and if this neuron loses out it will die and if it wins it will stay and there is another neuron let's say which cannot make the connection because this has come here and connected so this will die off so if you see there is competition for even the post synaptic spaces there is competition for the nerve growth factor as well then there is another concept so this happens and this when cells die off do you think it becomes an inefficient system think about it cells dying is it bad is it good well i put it to you think about it it may be good it has to be good but it is bad as well why think about all the millions of neurons that you could have still had right now while you're sitting in this class and your thinking would be so much clearer and faster right maybe in future somebody invents a substance that prevents the cells from dying off maybe the brains will get bigger to accommodate the skull cases will be bigger to accommodate all the neurons so they don't have to die off and provide all the nutrients so, but right now you do lose and you lose a lot of capacity with these neurons so what happens when cells die off the cells which are remaining then they rearrange themselves they rearrange in the sense when the weak cells die off they're gone what do you see here 
where the cell was. Do you see something here? Of course, empty space. Now, what happens in this empty space? These cells will grow. So, they take up this space. So, what happens is, when cells die off, there is a rearrangement of cells which takes place. Rearrangement of connections which takes place. The weak or the incorrect connections die. They leave space for other connections to form and other neurons to take their place. Synaptic rearrangement ensures that your systems, the brain systems are more efficient and very specific. Very specific in the sense that it becomes extremely selective. The transmission becomes more efficient. So, the system becomes more efficient because now the connections are more specific. Let me show you how this happens. Here, if you look at the first picture here on the extreme right, what you see here is that neurons have made connections everywhere. Each one of these neurons has sent connections and sprouted. So, in desperation, may in one apne sare connections sab jaga bheje. So, this is connected to here, 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 and three and four, all, can, all neurons. And so is this one, and so is the blue one. But what happens during the death of some connections? It becomes more specialized and more specific and more specific. So, each one of the neurons then selects the other neuron with which it is going to be connecting. This is an in, uh, a very efficient system because otherwise messages would just filter out to other sources and just disappear. But here the messages are sent quicker, faster and of course, in a more efficient manner. So, now you understand that there is selectivity of the neurons with each other and therefore, cell death is essential, required, cell rearrangement is required and cell connections are required and cell specificity is required, which is what makes the brain a most efficient system. Now, let us see the processes. I remember I talked to you about it in uh, lecture 17 and 18 about the processes of neurogenesis, growth of the neural system and the histogenesis. The histogenesis is the process in which the neurons and the glial cells develop and in the glial cells specially Glial cells, do you know what are glial cells? We have not really talked about it. But for neurons to sustain their size, their form, their shape, we need the glue, right? Har cheez ko rakhne ke liye, apni jagah pe chipkai rakhne ke liye, aapko glue ki zaroot hoti hai na? In the same manner, neurons require glial cells to keep their shape, their form, their structure and we will talk about it later when we talk in neuroanatomy. So, glial cells maujood hai aur har neuron ke saath 10 se 12 glial cells maujood hai, kuch chote hai, kuch bade hai, aare ke function the level hai. So, histogenesis mein neurons ban rahe hai, lekin along with the neurons, you have the macroglia. The macroglia of course, as the name implies, or the larger glia, macro, which arise from a single precursor cell. Now, the single precursor cell is where we have, if you remember, one parent cell and we from that emerges a, the neuroblastoma. The neuroblastoma is from which the neurons will emerge and the macroglia out of this process will emerge which are the astrocytes as the name implies they look like the star astrocytes 
and then the second large macroglia cell is oligodendrocytes. Don't bother about the names, just remember these are large glial cells. We will talk about them in detail later on. And then there are microglial cells. The microglial cells do not come out of the ectodermal tissue, out of the neuronal membrane. They come out of the mesodermal tissue, the mesodermal monocytes. So, even though both the macroglia and the microglia are the glial cells, but the macroglia are similar to the neurons because they emerge out of the same parent or the precursor cell or the cell layer and microglia comes from the mesodermal monocytes. Remember that in the process of histogenesis, extremely important is the radial glial, the transport, extremely important is the nerve growth factor without which nerves would not, neurons would not become what they are, the brain would not be what it is. The axonal growth cones, extremely important. Without that, axons would not sprout, would not grow, would not connect, would not be able to seek their directions. And then, of course, the concept which is also important to remember is that there is cell competition and cell death. Cell proliferation, cell proliferation, cell competition, cell death, they all go together. And then also to remember that connections are important for survival. Once the synapses are formed, some assurance of survival of the cell is given by fate. The more the synapses are formed, the more the cell will be able to compete. And then this is reformed later as I showed you. The cells do reform there and refine their connections later on. Desperation of both are sprout karte hai, both are connections form karte hai. Lekin aista aista because they have to become an inefficient, wo utne hi resources hai na, us cell ke paas. To wo sprouting bahut zada karega, to wo lose karega apni nutrients. To wo efficient system banane ke liye refine karta jata hai what cells it has. Now, what else? is important. How do cells determine the destination for migration? How do they know where to go? Yada wa tasweer, radial glial wali, us neuron chada ja raha hai. Ab wo neuron ne dousri jaga se, left se kyun nahi chada, right se kyun chada? Or down se kyun nahi chada? Bilkul 360 ke angle se, bilkul niche se reverse form se kyun utar chada? Aye. That is a very good question and people have been trying to answer this question. There are several hypotheses for this which have been formulated on the basis of specific evidence that has been found. One is the chemo affinity hypothesis. The chemo affinity as the name implies chemo affinity means affiliation for or bonding for or affinity for or attraction for particular chemicals. So, the, it is the chemicals which this neuron has and which this neuron has which attract them to come to one place. Now, how does this chemo affinity hypothesis emerge? Sperry, remember historically we talked about Sperry as being one of the Nobel laureates in the area of brain research. In the 60s, Sperry did experiments where he rotated the eyeballs of frogs. Eyeballs of frogs ko rotate kiya. Eyeball, jab aap normal usme hota hai form mein, so you see the world as it is. What if it is rotated? Yes, of course. Logically, the image will rotate. Logically, things would appear in a different place. You would not know unless you were the frog on which Sperry experimented. Now look at this picture and very nicely illustrates Sperry's experiment. This picture shows that 
normally under the normal circumstances the frog estimates where the fly is and swaps it with its tongue right normally because this is where the angle is angle of vision but look what happens when the eye is rotated it sees the fly here and the action taken it is estimating where the fly is supposed to be now the secret is that this eye is rotated the frog eye is rotated at an angle of 180 degrees do you see if it makes sense the fly is here and at an angle of 180 degrees the error is error of judgment is of 180 degrees so jitni degrees pe i rotate hui hai utni degrees ka error of judgment hai of action now which means that the images the eyes were processing information at a particular point which is naturally given isme fir usne ek aur kaam kiya ki usne transected the optic nerve in amphibians there is regeneration of the neurons and of the fiber systems the transected may bilkul blind tha frog he could not see the flies in whichever direction they came from but one the same the rotated eye frog jab wo uski uh, optic nerve regenerate hoke join ho gayi to fir kya hua fir wohi hua jo pehle ho raha tha 180 degrees ka error of estimation ho raha tha so sperry then concluded on the basis of this experiment that there is affinity in the neurons to gather at and to come together at one particular point in time each growing post synaptic space or surface releases some chemicals and this release of these chemicals then attracts other axons to this label so it's like a label or a signal which is shown by the the surface and neurons get attracted to it the neurons which have an affinity to it come together to, on this particular point the evidence of course itni badi baat karte hain so what is the evidence for it evidence number 1 that in in vitro in vitro means in the petri dish if you put axons and the axons which have the same chemical affinity will come together they will move together even in the petri dish even in that glass dish that you have outside the body what is that program then of course that program is that chemical affinity so in vitro axon move towards the targets and secondly there are chemicals which attract or repel the growth cones so there are some chemicals for which the growth cones which seek growth cones and the growth cones locate these chemicals and there are some chemical surfaces that the growth cones remember axon ke wo growth cone jo aage aage chali hui hai rasta banane ke liye wo se repel hoti hai which means that it's not going to go here it's going to then go somewhere else so dusri evidence that chemicals attract or repel growth cones from the extra cellular outside the cell space but it cannot explain some things which and some experiments which have other evidence for example when white law and holiday in 1983 added you know chicks have two legs dekhiye na do tange wale murgiyan dekhiye na sabne agar char tange ho to kitna acha everybody would have a drumstick in the family to eat 
बट ऑफकोर्स मुर्गियों की दो टांगे होती चिक्स की भी दो टांगे होती वाइट एंड हॉलीडे डिड दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट वेयर दे एडेड एन एक्स्ट्रा लेग इन द एम्ब्रियो and do you think that would have stayed it would have died off it did not die off it stayed so here was this chick with an implanted transplanted third leg and of course then there is an extra growth with transplanted organs and transplanted target organs so if there was chemical affinity Where was this affinity for the third organ, जो naturally programmed नहीं था सोचे Which means that this chemo affinity hypothesis is not really, does not really have, यहां पर refute हो जाती है उसकी evidence. Then the second question which chemo affinity cannot answer is, how do some axons find their way to the same targets in every species? every species means whether it is a donkey whether it is a monkey whether it is a uh, duck whether it is a bird whether it is a rat whether it is a human wo root jo hai wo wahi hai aur interesting baat ye hai ki in some cases neurons go bada lamba root leke jate they don't go the direct route but pahunchte wo apne target tak hi how does that happen वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग हर स्पीशीज में न्यूरोन्स ने ट्रेवल वही रूट करना है वही रूट है बस का वही सड़क है और वो बल्कि ढूंढ ढांड के टेढ़े मेढे रस्तों से जाते पहुंचना उन्होंने उधर ही है सो दैट डज नॉट आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन दिस कीमो एफेनिटी है पॉलिसिस एंड लास्टली वेरी लॉजिकल दे आर नॉट इनफ जीन्स इन द बॉडी ऑफ इच सेल to have a chemo affinity and a program for chemo affinity and a program for release of chemicals in each cell for each neuron and for each site not possible so therefore this particular hypothesis is refuted well people are collecting data for it but right now as it stands okay, the undeveloped nervous system has certain chemicals certain biological processes so certain mechanical trails trails kaun se wo transport systems which the growing axons do follow and on the basis of this the second hypothesis is called the blue print hypothesis blue prints kya hote hain hmm soche 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 कभी आर्किटेक्ट का मैप या घर जब आपके पेरेंट्स बना रहे थे या आपने फिल्में देखी होंगी या आपने तस्वीरें देखी होंगी आर्किटेक्ट्स बनाते हैं ब्लूप्रिंट घर बनाने के लिए ब्लूप्रिंट इसलिए ऑब्वियसली उसमें इंक ब्लू लगी होती है और इसी तरह से फिर ब्लूप्रिंट हम बनाते हैं कि हमने कोई प्लान बनाना है उसका पहले आउटलाइन बनाते हैं उसको भी हम ब्लू कह सकते हैं सो ब्लू इज Up actually an outline of a plan and where things will take place eventually so there this hypothesis states that there is already a program a plan or a blueprint according to which neurons with their axons will travel now where is it coming from one of this is if i take you back to that picture where you remember seeing the neurons moving is tasveer ko agar aap dekhe to isme aapko yaad hoga ki yahan se radial glial ke upar chal raha hai ek neuron jaise wo ek poem hai barish ka pehla katra yaad hai bachpan mein padhi एक पहला न्यूरॉन को किसी रास्ते पे चलना है ना फिर ये रास्ता पे बाकी न्यूरॉन चलेंगे सो देर हैज टू बी अ पाइनियर एग्जॉन अ पाइनियर न्यूरॉन एंड दैट पाइनियर विल ट्रेवल दिस पाथ 
and when it travels this path then others will follow so ye jo hai ye neuron ye pioneer neuron hai jisne pehla dafa is transport system ko ya is radial glial pe usne jamaya apna aapko aur usne chalna shuru kiya or this blueprint hypothesis states that there are pioneer growth cones and these pioneer growth cones are the first growth cones to travel the radial glial cells and the root and by doing so they give the remaining who are going to be coming after them the pathway and how do they leave the the trail koi nishaniyan chhodte jate hain अदरवाइज आपको कैसे पता चले जब पुराने जमाने की कहानी ना तो शहजादी जंगल में देव उठा के ले गया तो वो गिराती गई गिराती गई गिराती शहजादा आया उसको सब चीजें पता चलती जाएगी ये शहजादी की निशानी निशानिया अच्छा ये निशानियां कौन सी हैं यहाँ पर जो निशानियां हैं वो जो पाइनियर ग्रोथ कौन है वो छोड़ के जो जाता है अपने साथ बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग कहानी है इसको कहते हैं कैम्स कैम्स क्या है सेल एडिजन मॉलिक्यूल्स सो दिस पाइनियर कोन लीव ग्रोथ कोन लीव कैम्स बिहाइंड सो ये अपने साथ साथ अपनी निशानियां साथ साथ छोड़ता जाता है और निशानियां दूसरों के लिए छोड़ता जाता है दैट दे इंटरेक्ट विद दीज कैम्स सो दे फील अलॉन्ग द रूट एंड दीज फीलिंग द कैम द कैम्स सेल एडिजन मॉलिक्यूल्स विच फील अलॉन्ग द रूट इसकी एक्सटेंशन है इनको कहते हैं फेसिक्यूलेशन किताब में देखिएगा फेसिक्यूलेशन फेसिक्यूलेशन क्या है द प्रोसेस वाइल विच वेन द न्यूरोन आर ट्रेवलिंग दे कीप ग्रोइंग सो साथ साथ ट्रेवल भी कर रहे हैं साथ बड़े 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 होते जा रहे हैं ताकि जब तक ऊपर उतरे तो जवान हो गए so they grow but what happens the pioneer axons are destroyed if what if experiments have been done if you destroy the pioneer neurons or the pioneer axons jo is raste pe sabko leke jana tha raste pe nishaniyan chhodni thi wo jab nishaniyan nahi chhodte जब पाइनियर न्यूरॉन्स नहीं होते बाकी क्या होता है जो पीछे पब्लिक आ रही है जब लीडर खत्म हो गया तो पब्लिक आ रही है तो पब्लिक गुमनी है ना किधर जाए विच इज एग्जैक्टली वॉट है सो जब तक पाइनियर एग्जॉन्स और पाइनियर ग्रोथ कॉन्स हैं वो रास्ता दिखा रहे हैं रास्ते पे चल रहे हैं अगर हम इन पाइनियर्स को निकाल दें तो जितने न्यूरोन्स यहाँ बन रहे हैं वो घूमते जाएंगे दिल गेट लॉस्ट कोई इधर जाएगा कोई इधर जाएगा डायरेक्शन में सो एविडेंस कम्स फ्रॉम द स्टडीज वेयर पाइनियर एग्जॉन्स वर रिमूव्ड एंड वंस दे वर रिमूव्ड दे सो दैट देर वाज नो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ डेवलपमेंट विद इन द ग्रोइंग एग्जॉन्स एंड द न्यूरॉन्स okay very strong piece of evidence this but what happens it cannot explain travels on in the petri dish yaad hai petri dish mein jo chemo affinity hypothesis thi wo yahi batati thi ki saath saath neurons even in the petri dish ek dusre ke sath join karte hain groups ban jate hain so this hypothesis does not explain in vitro travels in the petri dish where there are no glial cells to give them the rope to climb on and there are no pioneers to climb on to that rope how do these neurons still travel and the second question is how do neurons in vivo in vivo means in the living organism in the system how do they do reach the correct 
destination even when the starting points have been changed that happens so starting points ko jumble kar diya lekin fir bhi cell ghoom phir ke wahan pahunch gaye jahan unki destination thi so ye kaise hota very interesting so then there is this third hypothesis which is called the topographic gradient hypothesis topographic means jaise geography mein locations farak hai na aur jagah farak hai kahi rocks hai kahi sand hai kahi stone hai kahi you know different different cheeze aapke paas hai so topographically different groups of neurons retain same relationships topographic ka matlab koi neuron agar cerebral cortex mein hai koi neuron optic area mein hai lower brain area mein thalamus mein hai they will retain or koi neuron agar retina mein so retina thalamus which is a staging area for vision and also then the optic um, or visual cortex to ab in teeno ki jo relationship hai teeno different jagah pe hain ek higher hai ek middle hai aur ek bilkul aapka sensory system hai teeno ki relationship topographically different hone ke bawajood inhone apni relationship sambhal ke rakhi hai they are the same function vision visual processes so that cells growing out of a original sheet of cell bodies similar cell bodies retain their relationship as they grow so these three which may have gone into different parts of the brain they started off from the same sheet of cells and therefore they retain their relationship while they are working on the visual system isi tarah auditory system ke isi tarah somato sensory system ke isi tarah baki sensory or motor systems ke relation so they grow in the same relationship and they maintain a point to point relationship khas taur pe visual system mein aur motor systems mein there is a point to point to point to point relationship एक जो पॉइंट यहां पे है एक जो पॉइंट यहां पे है एक जो पॉइंट यहां पे है एक जो पॉइंट कॉटेक्स में है एक जो पॉइंट थैलमस में है एक जो पॉइंट विजुअल रिसेप्टर में है ये पॉइंट टू पॉइंट रिलेशनशिप इसमें से जो पॉइंट आप डिस्ट्रॉय करेंगे उसके साथ जो रिलेटेड पॉइंट होगा वो वहां डिजेनरेट करेगा सो दिस इज द सेम हाइपोथिस दैट every cell will retain its relationship that it held previously in the sheet that it aroused from or rose from whether the relationship was up and down horizontal vertical lateral whichever relationship it was it will be maintained when the neurons grow into the brain very interesting well what is the evidence evidence comes from the retina and the optic tectum cells which are mapped one to one in the brain and if you remember i showed you a picture of the primate looking at usme se macro electrodes or micro electrodes lage hue the aur recording ho rahi thi और जहां उसको इमेजेस ऐसे नजर आते थे एक डिफरेंट ग्रुप ऑफ सेल्स रिस्पॉन्ड करता था जहां उसको इमेजेस ऐसे नजर आते थे एक ग्रुप ऑफ सेल्स रिस्पॉन्ड करता एक डॉट की जगह एक डॉट का सेल रिस्पॉन्ड करता था सो so, इतनी स्पेसिफिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन है वन टू वन रिलेशनशिप दैट दिस टोपोग्राफिक ग्रेडियंट हाइपोथिस डज अपियर टू बी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग हाइपोथिस फॉर एक्सप्लेनिंग why cells go where they go and how they go so when we are talking about the growth of the cells then the question emerges which of course we have been talking about throughout is therefore everything pre programmed 
you know looking at the hypothesis or the environment is important as well or throughout aapko kabhi nazar aata tha ki ha brain to program ke bagair chal nahi sakti develop nahi ho sakti phir kabhi nazar aata tha ki nahi jab tak environmental stimulation nahi hogi brain grow nahi kar sakti okay iske kuch principles aap zehen mein rakhiye one that the periphery becomes more important as connections are made in the growing brain shuru se aapko main batati aa rahi hu ki the stimulation has to come from the neighbor connections have to be made otherwise cells would die which means chahe program ho grow karne ka lekin unless that attachment is made unless that connection is made which means this is the external out of the cell environment that becomes more important so jab cells nuclei ban jate hain groups of nuclei ban jate hain to periphery or outside becomes more important periphery kaise important ho jati hai when connections are made the neurons with connections survive we have talked about it those who don't don't survive simple rule to jin ke connections ban gaye hain wo survive karte hain aha bas ye to kafi nahi hai isse aage kya kahani hai isse aage kahani ye hai if the peripheral structure is removed the brain area for the cell the brain area cells for that particular structure will atrophy atrophy means they will die off they will degenerate iska matlab ye hai ki wo external stimulation zaruri hai aapko yaad hoga maine aapko hubel and weasel ke experiments bataye the i ke upar where they had the cat pups the kittens with one eye goggle shaped like this way aur one bilkul blank काला किया हुआ उसको नजर ही नहीं आता पैदा होने के बाद गॉगल्स बना दिए जिस आंख में ये ग्रिड होगा उसकी जो डेवलपमेंट ब्रेन में होगी वो ग्रिड के फॉर्म में होगी और जिस आंख के ऊपर ये होगा उसकी डेवलपमेंट कैसी होगी वेल देर इज अ वेरी नाइस पिक्चर विच विल शो यू हाउ दिस लुक्स लाइक एंड यू विल बी अमेज बिकॉज the cells in the brain they die off now die off se kya matlab ye dekhiye next time we'll talk more in detail about it but look at the two pictures and keep these two pictures in mind because we're going to be talking about this in detail the next time final padhiye aap zarur handouts dekhiye and look at the pictures which you can get from the websites on neurosciences 100000 sites hain i will give you some specific references to look at for this course uh, in the next class thank you